Hello and welcome to another series in our CPT coding lecture. And today we are at the last section of category one of the CPT code set. The last section, which is the medicine section, begins on page 635 in your 2020 CPT manual. And I like to call the medicine section the garbage can section. And the reason I call it the garbage can section is because whatever we could not code in sections one through five, we're going to code over here. And whatever we can't code in CPT, we actually can code in HickPicks. So on 635, we start off with the table of contents. The guidelines are on page 639. Um, we are going to start right on page 641 with our immune globulins. So an immune globulin is a passive immunization agent that is obtained from pooled human plasma that is immune to a particular disease. Codes 90281 through 90399 include the immune globulin product only. In order to capture the administration of the immune globulin, we're going to be looking at administration codes that start with 96365. When we get to those in this section, I'll remind you about the use of those codes. Next up, still on page 641, the lower right-hand corner, we have our immunization, now notice the difference, immunization administration specifically for vaccines and toxoids. These administration, immunization codes, the administration codes are not to be used with the immune globulins. I wanna make sure that's very clear. So on page 642, that's when the administration codes begin, 90460 through 90474. The actual product we'll see shortly, but right now we're just talking about the codes on page 642. So first up, we have code 90460, 90461, and that is for immunization administration for patients through age 18 during those encounters for which counseling has been provided to the patient's family regarding the vaccine. So two things have to be present. The patient must be through age 18 and counseling has to be provided during this encounter. The first code, 90460, is for each vaccine administered. If the patient has vaccines that have multiple components, also known as combined vaccines, you're going to report 90460 in conjunction with 90461 for each additional vaccine component. Immediately after that, we have codes 90471 through 90474. These codes are for immunization in which the physician did not provide counseling for patients of any age, um, including those that are through age 18. 90471 is for the first administration of a vaccine. The add-on code 90472 is for each additional vaccine. That's a little different 
than the 90460, the 90461. So I highly recommend that you review the subsection notes on page 641 as well as page 642. 90471 is for the routes of administration that include percutaneous, intradermal, sub-Q, or intramuscular. Whereas 90473 is for intranasal or oral. Now, to capture the actual vaccine product, the vial that the immunization is in, we have codes 90476, which starts on page 643, all the way over to 90749, which is on page 647. Okay, so these codes um, contain codes for a single disease, but they also include codes for a combination of um, diseases. You'll wanna take some time to review the code descriptions because for example, for influenza, we have so many different options and you wanna make sure that you're capturing the option that reflects what was actually given to your patient. So vaccine administration, you have those six codes that we talked about, um, 90460 to 90474. And then for the vaccine product, 90476 through 90749. All right, after that, on page 647, we have codes for psychiatry. In this particular area, you're going to see diagnostic services, psychotherapy, and other services that are provided to an individual, a family, or a group. The first code in this code family, uh, it starts on page 648, but there is a whole page full of subsection notes that you'll want to review, and this is for interactive complexity. And interactive complexity is an add-on code that is to be reported in conjunction with codes for other services such as a diagnostic psychiatric eval, psychotherapy, and interactive complexity refers to specific communication factors that actually complicate the delivery of a psychiatric procedure. If you turn over to page 648, you'll actually see that add-on add code 90785. And then on page 648, you also have your psychiatric diagnostic procedures, specifically the psychiatric diagnostic evaluation. There are two code options, which are divided based upon if it is a diagnostic evaluation, with medical services or a diagnostic evaluation without medical services. So um, medical services include um, past family social history, um, establishment of a diagnosis, evaluation of the patient's you know, ability and will willingness to work through the mental problem. And it also includes um, a mental, a complete, mental status exam. Next up on page 649, we have psychotherapy. And psychotherapy is therapeutic treatment of a psychological disorder or behavior. These codes you'll notice on page 649 are time-based codes, either 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and 60 minutes. And they are subdivided based upon whether or not the psychotherapy was provided in addition to another service. So if you look on page 649, you'll notice that three of the six codes are add-on codes. And as you know, add-on codes cannot be used alone and they are utilized and added on to another service, also known as a primary service.
Next up, we're going to go on over to page 651. And we're going to look at dialysis, dialysis. So um, on page 651, what you'll notice is uh, some parenthetical notes. It starts off with parenthetical notes. Don't forget about those parenthetical notes. And then on page 642, 652, that's when the codes actually begin. So what is dialysis? Dialysis is cleansing of the blood of waste products when it's not possible for the body to do that on its own. Dialysis can be temporary, such as in the case where a patient has acute renal failure, um, or it can be permanent, such as in the situation of a patient who has end-stage renal disease and is not going to recover without a kidney transplant. From a CPT code perspective, we have three families of dialysis services. Starting on page 652, you have your hemodialysis codes. Uh, in the middle, or the right side of 652, we have codes that are labeled as miscellaneous. And these codes describe procedures other than hemodialysis or continuous renal replacement therapies, okay? Then lastly, on page 653, we have our end-stage renal disease dialysis services. What you will want to notice about these codes is that they are organized based upon if the service was provided monthly with a certain amount of visits. They also are organized by age. So if you look at 90951, under two years of age, then further subdivided based upon the number of visits during that monthly service. 90954 follows that same structure, but the patient is aged 2 to 11. 90957, the patient is 12 to 19. And when you turn the page, 654, code 90960, those patients are 20 and over. But those code families are for monthly dialysis services, and they're divided based upon the number of visits. Immediately after that, we have um, dialysis services for home dialysis for a full month. These are divided by the age of the patient. In those situations where you have dialysis that's going to be reported for less than a full month of services, then you're going to be looking at codes 90967, which are divided by age. All right, next up, we have ophthalmology services. And ophthalmology services begin on page 656. And the ophthalmology services start off with subsection notes that are very important, particularly the definitions of an intermediate ophthalmological exam versus a comprehensive ophthalmological exam. And then there are other definitions that are important, such as the initiation of diagnostic and treatment programs, as well as special ophthalmological services. If you don't know now, you know. You must read all of the subsection notes. So the first two codes uh, that we have are for new patient general ophthalmological services, followed by two established patient codes. They are divided based upon if the service is intermediate or comprehensive. Immediately after that, you have the special ophthalmological services. And you know how I remember those codes is, you know how you go to the um, eye doctor and they ask you, you know, do you want this other test? It's not covered by your insurance. You pay $15 and they might blow some air <laughs> in your eyes. So that particular service is an example of what's in those other options. Then on page 658, we have codes that are titled as ophthalmoscopy. Now, routine ophthalmoscopy is actually part of general and special ophthalmologic services wherever it's indicated. It is a non-itemized service and is not provided separately. So these are actually reflecting 
different types of ophthalmological services. So you wanna make sure that you're very clear on what your patient has done. The rest of the services that you're going to see there, turn over to page 660, you're gonna see contact lens services, you're gonna see spectacle services, those are your eyeglass services, the prescription part. Next up, we have special otorhinolaryngologic services, which are on page 661. And on page 661, what you're going to see here are um, codes for services that are provided by the ear, nose, and throat specialists. They're divided based upon the variety of services that the specialist can uh, perform. So you'll see uh, routine hearing exams uh, as an example. Next up on page 666, we're gonna go into cardiovascular. Now I know you're thinking, didn't we have cardiovascular in the surgery section? We did. Here, what you're going to see are some therapeutic services, some non-invasive cardiovascular uh, diagnostic testing, um, checking of equipment that was in, um, implanted during the surgical code section, um, just to name a few. So this particular section, we're gonna start off with what are known as percutaneous coronary interventions, also known as PCI. These start on page 666 with extensive notes on 666 and 667. These codes are divided based upon the type of intervention that they do, whether or not there is a stent that was performed. Um, also, if this procedure was done through a coronary artery bypass graft, lots of different options. And again, you'll wanna read those subsection notes to understand that section in more detail. Next up, we have what are known as cardiography services, and these are on page 670. And what you have here, guys, are services such as electrocardiogram, which starts with 93000, and then you have cardiovascular stress testing with 93015. Now, what you'll want to note here is that these two tests, are divided based upon whether or not one person is gonna get paid for everything, meaning the test, the reading of the test, or if it's going to be broken down in multiple uh, providers or facilities are gonna get part of that payment. So for example, if the patient has an EKG in the physician's office, more than likely, the physician is gonna read that X-ray, the medical assistant in the office, provided the test, they own the equipment, they're gonna get paid for the entire services that were rendered. All right, next up, we're gonna look at cardiovascular monitoring services on page 670. Starts off with, of course, some guidelines. And remember I said in the surgery section, we had all those devices that were implanted. Well, over here, this is where you're going to start to see that they can do a variety of services from a monitoring perspective. So it starts off with codes 93224, which is external electrocardiographic recording up to 48 hours by continuous rhythm recording and storage. And then as you start to turn over to page 672, you see implantable, insertable, and wearable cardiac device evaluation. And what does it start off with? Page 672 and 673 and 674, full of subsection notes. And then immediately following that, all the different services that can be provided. After that, we're gonna go over to page 677. And here we have echocardiography studies. And you'll notice on page 677, we start off with guidelines with the codes on page 678. You will want to take some time to review these code options because they have some differentiating factors such as 
transesophageal, transthoracic. So you want to be sure that you know how the echo was performed. There are also some add-on codes on page 679 um, that are related to this particular test, such as when they do uh, color flow velocity mapping, which is captured with code 93325. Next up, we have cardiac catheterization, which starts on page 679. And a cardiac catheterization is a procedure where the provider puts a catheter into either your groin or your wrist, and then the catheter is then threaded through your body, um, you know, through the blood vessels into your heart. And during this test, um, the doctor can do a variety of procedures. Um, they can do an angiogram to check for blocked or narrowing stenotic vessels in your heart. Um, this is how they can determine, for example, that the patient needs a bypass graft. Take a look at those code options. They are divided based upon whether it's a right heart cath, left heart cath, cath, a combined procedure, as well as there are um, some really cool tables on page 684, 685 that you'll want to take note of. On page 689, we have intracardiac electrophysiologic studies. Now, in the surgery section, you actually learned about surgical electrophysiologic physiologic procedures. They were called like the maze procedure. This here um, reflects a test where the doctor's going to be looking at how well the heart's signals are working. And they use this test to check for abnormal heartbeats or abnormal rhythms. So here, they're detecting the abnormal rhythm. And in the surgery section, they're correcting the abnormal rhythm. Next up, uh, after that, we have non-invasive vascular diagnostic studies. And those begin on page 694. And on 694, I don't know if you noticed, but there's more subsection notes, which defines a duplex scan or a physiologic study, just so that you can understand the differences in the codes that then follow on page 695 and 696. Immediately after that, page 697, we have an area that's called pulmonary. It starts off with ventilator management. Immediately after that, you have pulmonary diagnostic testing and therapies. So over here, you're going to see tests like um, pulmonary function tests. You're going to see uh, breathing treatments. Those codes are over here as well. Breathing treatments, take a look at 94640. If it's one of those continuous breathing treatments, 94644. All right, after that, on page 701, we have allergy and clinical immunology. Um, here, you're going to see services for when the patient visits the allergy specialist. Next up, endocrinology on page 703. And what you're going to see here are um, services such as ambulatory continuous glucose monitoring. So your patients that have diabetes may have this device that is being utilized. Next up, we have neurology and neuromuscular procedures, which start on page 704. And of course, guys, it starts off with subsection notes. Included here, uh, you have services such as sleep medicine testing. Um, you have routine EEG studies. So for patients that have uh, seizures, they can review brain activity there. All right, there are lots of actually new codes for 2020 uh, in this particular area. 
um, related to EEGs. If you go over to page 712, we have special EEG testing. Next up, on page 721, we have our medical genetics and genetic counseling services. And we only have one code on page 722. And these codes are time-based codes, 30 minutes face-to-face -face with the patient and or family. All right, so after that, we're gonna go over to page 722. And on page 722, we have adaptive behavior services. And adaptive behavior services is divided into adaptive behavior assessments and adaptive behavior treatment. There are lots of subsection notes and definitions that you'll want to review uh, as they do impact your code assignments. And I don't know if you are noticing, but on page 722, before you even get to adaptive behavior assessments, you have the overall adaptive behavior services. All right, next up, we have CNS testing. This is on page 725. And of course, <laughs> starts off with lots of um, subsection notes and definitions. And there's a really cool table on page 726. And these codes are specifically for the central nervous system. That's so very, very important. These tests are looking at um, central nervous system functions. So there's a really cool table on 726 that you'll wanna take a look at. After that, on page 728, we have the health behavior, health and behavior assessment and intervention services. These were actually new codes for 2020. These codes are divided uh, based upon um, time, as well as if the service was provided with family. All right, now to the fun, fun part of, um, of the medicine section. Um, oftentimes, I, I think that these are, um, a lot of people feel that this area is, is pretty complex. So um, over here, um, we have codes for hydration, therapeutic, prophylactic, diagnostic injections and infusions, and chemotherapy and other highly complex drug or highly complex biologic agents and administration. So this area starts off with lots of subsection notes as you're noticing on page 730 and 731. There are some important definitions that you do need to know for this particular family of codes. And you've heard these before. Uh, but you need to know what an injection is versus an infusion. So an injection delivers a dose in one shot as opposed to over a period of time. Infusion is when IV fluids and or drugs are given either for diagnostic purposes or therapeutic purposes, but they're given under um, over a period of time. Um, you also need to be familiar with um, the various routes of administration for injection. So subcutaneous, intramuscular, intraarterial, intravenous. Um, and with intravenous, you can actually have intravenous push or intravenous infusion. So intravenous push is an injection. Intravenous infusion, um, that's something that's usually gonna take place uh, 30 minutes or more. Um, the American Health Information Management Association put out this diagram that really kind of helps level set 
uh, what you're looking for in the documentation. And so some of the things that they recommend that you look for is, why is the patient here? Uh, so what's the purpose of the visit? What type of treatment is the patient receiving? Is the patient receiving uh, chemotherapy, non-chemotherapy? The reason for that is that there is a hierarchy as it relates to these substances, which is actually identified on page 730 regarding the, the hierarchy. So chemotherapy is the highest in non-chemotherapy than injections, infusions, and IV pushes. Um, how was it given? Was it an infusion? Was it an injection? Was it sub-Q? Was it intramuscular? Was it a combination? And then how long did it take? Remember, an injection has an immediate effect, um, typically within three to five minutes. Um, infusion is something that's going to be given more than 30 minutes. And a lot of these codes are time-based codes, so it's important to know um, this information. All right, next up, we have our hydration codes on page 731. And hydration um, is a prepackaged fluid and electrolytes that is given to a patient. So if a patient is um, dehydrated, they will um, rehydrate them with IV hydration. Now, there are some rules regarding hydration. Um, if we are hydrating the patient um, because we're going to be administering fluids, the, the hydration um, is not separately reportable. It's considered incidental. Our hydration codes are time-based codes. You'll notice that um, there are two options, uh, 31 minutes to one hour. And then there's an add-on code for each additional hour. Immediately after that, and I want you to take note of the word initial in code 96363, because you're going to see initial a lot. And on page 730 uh, and 731, they talk about the initial concept. You'll want to make sure that you review that. Starting on page 731, we have our codes for therapeutic, prophylactic, and diagnostic injections and infusions other than chemotherapy. So remember when I started the medicine section, we talked about the immune globulins, and I had mentioned that the administration of the immune globulins would be coded later in the um, later in this section. Well, we finally have made it to this section, and this is where we're going to be capturing that particular service. So over here on page 732, you have intravenous infusion for therapy. Uh, you'll notice that this code uses the word initial, and it's up to one hour, with the add-on code for each additional hour. Then you have um, an add-on code 96367 says each or says additional sequential infusion of a new drug. Now that word sequential, they define it on page 730. So again, prior to reading this particular area or coding from this particular area, it's critical that you read the notations on page. 730 and 731. All right, also on page uh, 732, we have code 96368 for concurrent infusion, 96369 for a subcutaneous infusion. If the patient is getting an injection that's therapeutic, prophylactic, or diagnostic, we have 96372. All right, now we have our chemotherapy codes, which start on page 733. The codes themselves are on page 734, and they are divided based upon the type of administration that they're actually doing. These are also time-based codes with instructional notes that you need to be aware of. 
Next up on the bottom of page 735, you have your photodynamic therapy services. And these codes are used to uh, report a variety of services, such as non-surgical treatment of cutaneous lesions using photodynamic therapy. On page 736, we have special dermatological procedures. And these particular services here are other types of uh, services that the dermatologist could perform um, on their patient. Physical medicine rehab on page 737. So the first thing that I think is important for you to note is as it relates to physical medicine and rehab, this section first starts off with physical therapy evaluation, which are on page 738. 739, you have occupational therapy evaluation. And then on page 740, you have athletic training evaluation. So those are the first three categories that are under physical medicine and um, rehabilitation. Each of these three code families do have something in common in that they have four codes in each code family. The first three codes are for the initial evaluation with the fourth code being a re-evaluation service. Immediately after that, if you go on over to page 741, this is where you get into the physical or the rehabilitation modalities. The modalities are divided into supervised and constant attendance. Supervised is a service that does not require direct one-on-one -on -one patient contact. So what that means is, and if you've ever been to physical therapy, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. This means that they could be working on two patients at one time. Whereas constant attendance, those services uh, require one-on-one -on -one patient contact. Now, one of the things you'll notice about the constant attendance codes is that they are time-based codes. Immediately after that, on page 742, you have therapeutic procedures, and those are the other services that they can provide during the therapeutic service. Next up, we have medical nutrition therapy services on page 744. And there, what you're going to find are time-based codes for either an individual service or a group service for medical nutrition therapies. All right, uh, after that, the next set of codes we have are for acupuncture. And the acupuncture codes on page 745, they are divided uh, based upon whether or not uh, electrical stimulation was provided, and they are also time-based codes. On page 745, we have an area that's called osteopathic manipulative treatment, and this is a form of manual treatment applied by the physician or qualified healthcare professional to eliminate or alleviate somatic dysfunction and related disorders. On page 746, you'll notice that these codes are divided based upon the body regions that are involved. Next up on page 746, we have an area that's called chiropractic manipulative treatment. And this is a form of manual treatment to influence joint and neurophysiological function. These codes on page 746 are divided based upon what is known as spinal region. Please be sure to review the subsection notes for both of these areas. Next up, 
We have education training for patient self-management. Starts on page 746. Codes are on page 747. These are codes that are based on time, uh, if it's an individual patient, but we also have codes for more than one patient. The goal of these services are to basically equip the patient with skills so that they can manage their treatment plan and care. Next up, we have non-face-to-face -face services on page 747. And here, you're going to see telephone services as well as, and those are codes 98966 through 98968. But I want to note here, we have telephone services in the evaluation and management section. These telephone services are for non-physician services, okay? So non-face-to-face, non-physician services. On page 747, 748, we also have uh, what are known as um, online digital evaluation and management services as well. Next up on page 750, we have our codes for moderate sedation, also known as conscious sedation. And this is where the patient is getting a combination of medications to help them relax and block pain during a medical or um, a dental procedure. The patient is generally awake, but um, probably is not able to speak. These codes start off with lots of subsection notes on page 750 and 751, and they detail what is known as pre-service work, intra-service work, and post-service work. There is a table on page 751 because we need to know these are time-based codes. These codes are also divided by the patient age, and they're also divided, the third and fourth column, based upon if the person who is supervising the moderate sedation procedure is also doing the service for which the moderate sedation is being provided. Take some time and review that information, lots of information. Of note, this is not deep anesthesia like we saw in the anesthesia section. Next up on page 753, we have our home health services. And these are non-physician healthcare professionals that are providing these services. And there's a variety of things that they can do under this particular code family. And lastly, for the medicine section, we end with medication therapy management services on page 754. And what we have here is a face-to-face -face patient assessment and intervention by the pharmacist that's done upon request. And the goal of this uh, particular service is for the pharmacist to use their knowledge of medications to help the patients understand the interactions between medications, taking their medications properly. All right, well, you finally made it to the last section of the CPT manual, which means it is almost time for you to take your national exam. I highly recommend that you go back to the beginning of this series prior to that big exam day. Thank you so much.